Hello, and thank you for listening to WRYAT, New Orleans' fifth-ranked public radio station. As always, we're broadcasting live from a prefabricated Home Depot shed located off of South Carrollton by the Popeyes. Well, a good jambalaya gumbo to you too, crayfish fans. Daniel Stearns is the only boating goods store in the Tri-Parish area that specializes entirely in selling you boat rear ends. Gator done bit your boat in half and left you with only the bow to paddle with? Get your rear and gear and get a rear and rear gear for your boat at Daniel Stearns. Henri Saints fans still sour about the Super Bowl 53 that wasn't and done rendered your watercraft in twain? Daniel Stearns may not have the points to bring us back home in the back end, but it's got the back ends to bring the boat back home and back out again. It's real New Orleans and real jazz, Cajun style baby. Voodoo! Daniel Stearns is the best boat rear end business in the boat rear end business, and it's located entirely, completely in New Orleans, in Metairie, off veterans, near Kenner. Who is that? Mardi Gras. This is Donnie D'Amico. This is Ronnie D'Amico. And you're listening to Boat Talk. Yeah, turn your stations over to Boat Talk. And we're going to turn our stations over to this first and only caller. So don't change the dial. Don't touch the dial. Do not touch it, Kyle. Anyway, caller? Hello, Ronnie and Donnie. Uh, So excited to be here. uh, I'm wondering, what should I bring to eat when I go on a boat to go fishing? Oh, all right. I mean, uh, we've talked about this a number of times, haven't we, Ronnie? Oh, all the time, Donnie. All the time. Like, just, it's, (sighs) see, when you're trying to find a perfect meal to give to a boat, you got to first ask yourself a series of, like, important questions. Yeah, why am I thinking about this boat? Oh, God, will this meal appease the boat? What well, kind of dark magic brought this boat to life? Why are we both dreaming about the boat? Why does the boat uh, asking me for food? Could not the boat find its own food? Does the boat talk? I would imagine it hopes it, like, uses its uh, kinetic abilities to talk to right to my brain hole. Why does it sound like when it's trying to talk, it's just slapping machinery against machinery? How does it breathe? Why is the boat asking me deep questions like, what are these new feelings it's feeling when it steps on something sharp like a Lego? Why is the boat screaming for more pasta? Which I can only assume is what it meant when it was saying clank, clank, death, clank, how scraping maw, clank. Why, after a night of deep conversation with said boat, does it ask me, hey... Do you want to do something weird? And it pulls out its bilge pump. Why does the boat tell me to kill Ronnie? Why does the boat tell me Donnie's trying to be a traitor and I should be in charge of boat talk? That's when you decide, all right, we better start feeding that boat or we're going to fucking kill each other. And we tried. The first thing I did was gave it some, like, boat parts to see if it would eat that. Yeah, so we just kind of sliced open the boat on the side and started shoving in more boat parts. And it was really hard to saw through a lot. I mean, they make boats... One thing, really one tough. Thing, it make them good. Yeah, and it just didn't like it. It just kept like spinning it back out at us. Yeah, it wasn't turning on after the fact either. We were just like, Jesus, we're gonna have to get this boat to a boat doctor. And we tried everything. We started feeding it like and nuts and bolts. Thing. We were trying to feed it nuts and bolts, and then when it wasn't taking that, we we're trying to wash it down with some oil. Yeah, but it was just. It was one day, and a cockroach just kind of ran by, and it just ate it real quick. And it looked happy. I've never seen a boat happy. And then, like, we were like, all right, so it eats a cockroach. What else would it eat? And then we started catching some mice. Then we gave it a duck and then some nutria rats. Oh, yeah, don't go further than that because, you know, there are still those lost dog signs that our neighbors have up, and they don't need to know about whatever the boat's been eating or not eating. No, but lately, Donnie, uh, I don't know if I should be saying this. It might as well. It's called boat talk. I know, but... The boat's been coming to me, waking me up in the middle of the night, Donnie. He comes to the window and just sticks his boat motor in the window and shakes me awake. And he says he needs more. He needs bigger things. Like what kind of bigger things, Ronnie? I don't know. He just keeps looking over at uh, that guy Steve across the street. And he points at Steve. And then he points at his boat mouth. Well, do you think it would be in the boat's best interest? To feed him Steve 
so he doesn't come after, say, Donnie or Ronnie? I don't know if I can go to that level, Donnie. I don't know if I can go to that level. The boat commands it, Ronnie. You know that's what the boat wants. But I'm not strong like you, Donnie. I don't know if I can feed it just Steve. You just stay here. I got Steve on speed dial, or as I like to call it, Steve dial. There's no speed dial. It's a cell phone. I understand. And I'll see what he's doing tonight. Hello? Hello, Steven. This is Donnie D'Amico. Yeah, Donnie, what's up? Oh, not much. Not much, Steven. Ronnie and I were just doing an episode of Boat Talk, like we are known to do nonchalantly from time to time. I noticed you guys had recording equipment out. Yes, it is mainly for the show. Steven, I would like to ask you a question. What's that? What are you doing this evening, if anything? Just going to have a pizza, huh? Yeah. What if I were to tell you, Stephen, that Ronnie and I were just going to have a pizza and maybe we could all just have a pizza together if you come over to our house and meet us in the backyard near our boat? Yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. You guys are great. We are great. You're great too, Stephen. Why don't you come over around and say, Hey, Ronnie! Yeah, what's up? When's that boat's feeding hour again? Uh, usually at uh, 11.45. Would you like to come over around, say, a quarter to midnight? Yeah, that sounds fine. Sounds good to us, too. Thank you, Stephen. We will see you around the back near the boat. I'll, I'll see you there. Don't wear any clothing. The boat doesn't like that. I mean, you'd wear whatever you want. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. See okay. you tonight. Bye, Daddy. Goodbye, Stephen. See, that wasn't so hard. No, that wasn't hard at all. Like, all we just got to do now is just hit him in the back of the head with a sock full of quarters. Yeah, so now I guess what will the boat want after you feed it, Steve? That's a good question there. Like, but that sounds like it's going to be another boat talk yeah. episode to talk about what desserts to feed to a boat. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we boat to it. Oh, nice, Donnie. I'm going to tell that to the boat tonight after it eats Steve. Just make sure that you credit me this time because we need to know that the boat's keeping a log of whose jokes are hitting and who's missing. That's right. Praise the boat. Praise the boat. Anyway, this is Ronnie D'Amico. This is Donnie D'Amico. See you on the water. And Stephen, we'll see you around the back of our house. In the boat's tum-tums. 11.45 p.m. Bye. Founded in a basement... In August of 1974, Air D&D is a trusted community marketplace for people to discover and book accommodations around the world and in all nine of the ethereal planes. Whether it's a hut for a night, a castle for a week, or in a dungeon for a month, Air D&D connects people to unique travel experiences. At a price that suits you, three medium pepperoni pizzas or cheese, all of which are your choice. Find the right place to stay using our state-of-the-art matching system. Simply roll for interest in any of our 20,000 available lodgings, add two to this number, and that is your number of intrigue. One of our licensed dwelling masters will compare that number to their roll. If yours is higher, you are successful. If you are a guest, roll an extra eight-sided die. You will need a four to succeed to bring the guest along. If you roll a one, your guest will go missing. With a world-class customer service and a growing community of basements, Air D&D is the easiest way for people to monetize their extra space and showcase it to an audience of millions worldwide in exchange for gold, magic spells, or well-crafted bard songs. Every accommodation is put through a rigorous four-point inspection. Doesn't have a microwave. What's the Wi-Fi password? At least one cute girl who kind of cheats, but no one cares? Mountain Dew Code Red available? Pretend to be anywhere. Pretend not to live with your parents. Pretend. Air d and Hot air rises off the murky waters. Cypress knees scrape the bottom of your boat. Wind blows the Spanish moss. 
Gators, dive back into the depths. Open your mind and relax to Bayou Thoughts. Girls in this world are raised to believe in unicorns. I get it. They're magical and majestic. Their hair is every color of the rainbow and then some. If you are sad, a unicorn will wipe away your tears with the tip of its horn. They are the most gentle of creatures and only wish to spread happiness to a bleak world. It's a lovely sentiment, but one that is predicated on lies. A unicorn is nothing more than a horse whose sole purpose in life is to build up false hopes and tear off the bandage of love that come into your life when you are young and stupid. To ask you to take magical adventures with their friends in a far-off kingdom, but the moment you go through puberty, they abandon you. They say you're too heavy to ride on Glitterwind's back. That you made things weird when you got too excited after a mermaid rescue. You were a young man then. Your body was changing and all you wanted was a friend to help you through it. This is why my only friend now is accounting books. They will never hurt you. They will not possess the same magic that can transport you to a sea of color. But at least they will not judge you when your voice starts to change. I'm doing good. Uh, this is a this is gonna be a, a nice calendar. Hmm, 4 p.m. Alan plays with fire. Malin Jennings. McKinley High, 1972 jazz band at the Overjoyed Tea Eater. 5 p.m. Dogs on a carpet. Snapback. Trick. Out of tune baboon at Carnival Larry. 7 p.m. What you gonna see on the mean streets where well, you could probably see frequent blinkers? Oh, the submarine races. They good. Lakeshore Necklace at Big Tribbles. It's next to the Little China Shop. 9.30 p.m. Ooh, we're hitting at a 30 p.m. Google Oogle. As they cry. Glitter, litter box. At the Lamp Fighter Lunch. 11 p.m. What do we have? This is the last show for the calendar on such a spooky weekend. It's the best in pizza. Thunderstorm Elliot. Step Crawdad. Mandatory watch party. Oh, that was fun doing a vampire at Daiquiri Marina. That was the music calendar, everybody. I hope you have a spooky safe one. Oh. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Um, I'm I'm doing good. Uh, don't worry, just keep focused on the road. But I want to say something. I'm gonna be going away for a while. Loop is gonna have to go. Uh, it's nothing bad, but the the studio definitely thinks that I need to get a break. They said after the coyote incident and working when everybody's on a hurricane vacation evacuation. That maybe I'm taking this too seriously. So I thought it would be a great time to bring in a new acquaintance, hopefully a future friend of mine, Miss Adventure. She's coming in from the college radio station, W-R-Y-A-T-U-N-I. Once again, Miss Adventure, welcome. Hello, Mr. Lupa. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. So, does, you're familiar with the studio because you, you do it at college, correct? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, we have a, a bigger board. Okay. We, don't, we don't keep our music in drawers. Oh, well, you just got to make do. We're doing the best we can. Okay. Well, good thing you don't have to do it here and you get to do it from the comforts of your own college radio station. Um, as you can see... 
I like to uh, put up my posters uh, when I come in to do my show and then I take them as I go because I don't think it's fair to leave posters up for everyone. Is that how it is in your studio? Oh, no. Our walls are covered in posters and then there's posters on top of posters. It's like a a crate. Paper mache situation. That seems like a, a like a, a art installation piece that's constantly growing. Uh, growing is uh, definitely one word for it. Yeah. Does it help with the sound? Probably. Does I'm some- sure there's some sort of uh, absorption happening in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, maybe when I come back from my vacation, I can try to pitch some ideas. Um, I was wondering, are you guys? shorthanded over at the college radio station well you know we've got our program going on to try and get new djs because you know the students a lot of us you know when we were were born there was everyone just you know made spotify playlists and stuff and so uh people just don't really know how to play a cd it's really hard absolutely uh you know well I'm not in school, but I could definitely play a CD if you need any help. But it's not about me. It's more about you, Miss Adventure. I know you don't do it alone, but what kind of fun stuff could we possibly be uh, looking forward to, to hearing on the station? Oh, well, I'm really into electromagnetism harpsichord. Well, okay. I look forward to listening to that. That seems intriguing. I also have done some, um, you know, I've gotten really deep into like independent, uh, independent steamship punk rock. Oh, that sounds very uh, relaxing. You know, I could definitely get down to that. And copper, I bet you it's copper. Something, something, I could see it now. Like a copper hat? That would be spectacular. I, I think so. I mean, I, I'm not the smartest of man. Hey, I have a question for you, Miss Adventure. I was wondering, do y'all have like uh, things that y'all gotta read because you know you're you're giving somebody's giving you money? Do y'all have that kind of stuff? Because we have to do that over here. And it's not always the most fun. And I don't care if people hear me. I'm going to take a break in a second or two. Well, uh, we, we get some money from the university. But, yeah, we got to ask for money. We have That's our hard. fundraisers and stuff. And, uh, you know, we have our annual eating contest Ooh. where we uh <laughs> Try and get people to eat the most po' boys on air. Oh, that sounds delicious. I would like to hear that. Just a lot of eating sounds. You know, that lettuce might have a really nice crunch to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if it's dressed. If it's not dressed, then you're not going to have lettuce on it because that's how it works. Usually people just call in and say, I'll give you money to make it stop. But I... That's money coming through. Money, money. Man, maybe I should eat a sandwich every once in a while. And people send us money. I have a question, Miss Adventure. Mr. Loop, go ahead. All right. I just noticed that uh, you have a lot of tattoos. Uh, yeah. Do they tell a story? And if so, what story could you replace with a song would be your favorite What's your favorite song on your body? Is my question. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I got one down on my my leg, and it's a adventure. Zorp is the song, uh, and the band is a band called Penis, and it's P E N I T H, and Penis. so Penis. Penis. Like Zenith. Yeah, I was about to say that. That's I'm, I'm familiar. They just, they know my soul. They just know it's, they get me so hard. And uh, so I have this tattoo of a um, crawfish with like a human heart inside of it. And, and that's for, that's for Penis. Oh. Well, that's the answer to my question is not what I expected, 
but it's fun to know. Well, this is kind of uh, what I do with my time. And I'm thanking you, Miss Adventure, for being here. I hope you enjoy uh, the next few uh, weeks or whatever a lot of time you have uh, to underwrite and take over my my, my show. I'm this has been a musical experience, and I will let you close this out, Miss Adventure. Thank you, Mr. Loop, for having me. And uh, tune in next Wednesday. We'll have some new experiments for you. W-R-Y-A-T-U-N-I. We'll listen together. That's, that's funny. I'm going to say that next time. That new, hip brunch spot you've been looking for? Yeah, it's Meow Milk. And yeah, it's in the Bywater. All of your friends have had Meow Milk, and they all work in the service industry. So you can take it on their authority when they tell you Meow Milk is the best brunch spot in town. And they have told you that Meow Milk is the best brunch spot in town. Repeatedly. We know what you're thinking. You've had brunch before. But have you had brunch at Meow Milk before? Where breakfast seamlessly integrates into lunch? That's not just because it's brunch, but because our average wait time for tables ranges anywhere between half an hour to three and a half hours. Always. Oh, but you'll wait. Because it's worth it. Because your friends have told you it's worth it. Repeatedly. One of your friends posted about Meow Milk's pancakes on Instagram. They declared them to be the best pancakes they've ever had. And they would know. They work in the service industry. And they didn't just post about these pancakes in their story. No. They dedicated a full, commemorative post to these pancakes as part of their expansive, curated, and personal Instagram collection. They didn't even need to use a filter and got over 300 likes, all from people who've been to Meow Milk. Don't you want to be someone who's been to Meow Milk? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You desperately want to try our elusive brunch because you need to. Everyone's already told you about it. Everyone's already posted about it. Everyone's already waiting for the next available table. So get on a bike and pedal down to the Bywater so you can finally be somebody at Meow Milk. We're open on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. No reservations necessary because we don't have any, and neither should you. And also because we don't take them. While you wait for a table, do the chill thing and follow Meow Milk on Instagram so you can ogle our weekly specials and try furiously to obtain access to it before we stop making it, which is normally within the first 10 to 30 minutes of our business operating hours, which again are 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sundays, excluding holidays. Or if we don't feel like it, it doesn't matter. You'll wait. You have to. Repeatedly. Because you're not just waiting for brunch. You're waiting for Meow Milk. The brunch you need to be seen. This is WRYAT New Orleans Guerrilla Radio. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.